Shot in 4K Ultra High Definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. It's a cold start out there. We have a frost advisory in effect for our western counties. I'll show you how cold it will feel as you step out the door. Today, early voting gets underway statewide for the 2024 presidential election. What you need to know before heading to a polling site. And a man suspected of a double murder in Cumberland County and a police canine are dead after a shootout. Who investigators now want to speak to in this ongoing investigation? And you can almost smell the funnel cake now. Gates for the North Carolina State Fair open in just a few hours. We'll tell you about things to keep in mind when it comes to traffic and parking. It is a big day with the opening day of the State Fair, and we'll let you know all about it. Good morning, everyone. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Great to have you along here. You can park it right here because uh, <laughs> we have all the news you need to get your day started here. Beginning with Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center. Ooh. Wow, the frost advisory is chilly out. Yeah, the weather is going to be fairly cold out there, too. Our frost advisory in effect for the western part of the, uh, the viewing area. Temperatures in the mid-30s there, and again, the potential for some patchy frost. That's going to be uh, Durham up toward Rockland. Roxborough and all the way down towards uh, Siler City and Southern Pines. Here's a live look at Raleigh right now, and you can almost tell that there's some clouds out there. Uh, when we have clouds, our overnight low tends to be a little bit warmer. So right now in the triangle, it's 45 degrees. If we clear out, we may see these temperatures drop a bit. But yesterday we were talking about that, forecasting some 30s out there. But with some cloud cover, it's maybe tough to get there in some places. So you can see right now temperatures are mostly in the low to mid 40s. It is colder than yesterday by about 5 to 10 degrees, but I'm not sure that everybody is going to get on down into the 30s because of the cloud cover that is lingering. It is breezy out there right now, and it'll stay breezy. Wind gusts 15 to 20 miles per hour today, and it's cool again. Like yesterday, bright skies out there, temperatures in the low 60s. Coming up, we're going to talk more about uh, when we may see another frost advisory. Elizabeth, thanks. Today, people across North Carolina will cast their ballot for the November election. Early voting is kicking off statewide today. More than 400 locations across the state will open this morning for the 17-day voting period. If you're wondering about Western North Carolina, only four of 80 sites in the 25 Western counties, hardest hit by Helene, will not open. Wake County has 22 early voting locations, the most the county has ever had. Early voting is popular among North North Carolina's voters. 65% of ballots in the state were cast this way in the last election. We have a voter's guide for you on our website. It has more information about same day registration, all the important dates you need to know, as well as information on voter ID and how to vote by mail. Go to WRL.com, search election 2024. Vice President Kamala Harris is running mate. Governor Tim Walz will be in North Carolina today. He and former President Bill Clinton will visit Durham to encourage people to vote early. Walz will then travel to Winston-Salem for a rally tonight. Former President Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, held a rally last night in Wilmington. It took place at the Aero Center. This morning, the man accused of shooting and killing two employees of a window cleaning business in Cumberland County on Tuesday is dead. Authorities say the suspected shooter, Desmond Moore, was killed in a shootout with police in Mount Airy yesterday afternoon. A police canine also died in that shootout. The Cumberland County Sheriff's Office identified the victims of Tuesday's shooting as 21-year-old Arthur Acosta and 32-year-old Taylor Duggins. Deputies are looking for another woman for questions in the shooting. It's unclear how or if she is connected. Police say they've responded to a crash in Mount Airy and Moore had run from that scene. Officers were able to track him down and that's when the shootout began and Moore was killed. The Mount Airy Police Department released this photo of the canine that died in the shootout. In a Facebook post, the department says canine Draco died as a hero and will be deeply missed. It asks people to keep Draco's handler in their prayers. Authorities in Cumberland County identified the victims of Tuesday's shooting as 21-year-old Arthur Acosta and 32-year-old Taylor Duggins. Tributes from loved ones were posted online. A sister to Acosta wrote about how amazingly sweet and hardworking he is. The owner of NC Window Cleaning, the company the victims worked for, described Duggins as his right hand and such a great person. Duggins leaves behind a wife and five children. The Cumberland County Sheriff's Office released pictures of an unidentified female they say is wanted for questioning. Here's the picture, and they want anyone with information about the shootings to come forward. 
Today, U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg will join Governor Roy Cooper on a tour of the damage caused by Helene. They plan to visit Asheville's River Arts District as well as the town of Canton. They will also take a look at the work being done to fix I-40 near the North Carolina-Tennessee border. The United States Department of Transportation has made $100 million in emergency funding available to fix those roads in North Carolina after Helene. In just several hours, the gates for the 2024 North Carolina State Fair will officially open just seven and a half hours away. WRL's Brett Neese joins us live from the State Fair grounds this morning. And Brett, we know from every year people need to plan for the traffic and for parking. Oh, exactly. And especially with so much construction going on around the fairgrounds, Renee, that is even more important this year. But we got one of these stands here behind me. Look at all these amazing prizes that people can win out here at all of these games. We are ready for people to get out here for the 2024 State Fair. It is going to be an incredible time when those gates open, of course, at noon. But let's talk about parking. Let's talk about where you can park. It's free parking all around. We have so many different spots that you can uh, park at. Uh, take a look at this map right here and you can see there's, of course, Carter Finley Stadium and Lenovo Center on non show days. That's free parking that is right across uh, the street here from the state fairgrounds. But then there's the Cardinal lot and the Dogwood lot. Those are park and ride uh, areas, but also free. So they'll have shuttle buses so that you can get over here to the state fairgrounds, enjoy everything for free. Of course, the big thing from uh, folks here, from officials uh, with the state fair, get those tickets early. Save a couple of bucks by buying a ticket online instead of one of the kiosks here at the state fairgrounds. We're going to talk a little bit more about what you need to know in our next half hour. And we're going to be out here all morning long as we gear up for the 2024 State Fair. Live in Raleigh, Brittany, WRL News. Be sure to stop by our tent to meet members of the WRL team while you're at the fair. We will be in our usual spot on the northeast side of Dorton Arena. Chris Michaels and Killy Arthur will kick things off there today from 2 3 p.m. And tomorrow, Jeff and I will be there in the morning from 10 30 until 11 30. City of Durham wants to hear from you on funding priorities for the upcoming city budget. Online registration is now open for Durham residents interested in joining community conversations in the coming weeks. Seven events are scheduled through November 1st, and the first one is tonight, and there will be free child care on site for families as well. You can see dates and locations of future events on the city's website. <laughs> Your time is 437 here in the WRL Live Center. Good morning. I'm Chris Lovingood. Uh, tracking this situation unfolding in the Middle East, the U.S. defense leadership saying that there were some underground Houthi rebel bunkers that were targeted. These were weapon storage facilities that uh, they have been tracking for quite a bit there. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says five specific facilities were targeted, but it's unclear the extent of the damage. The strike appears to be an indirect warning to Iran. That country has been a main supporter of the Houthi rebels. And these are the rebels attacking ships in the Red Sea corridor for months in response to the Israel-Hamas war in the Gaza Strip. Chris, thanks. Today, the new Canes-owned restaurant at the site of the former Backyard Bistro opens. The local is across Trinity Road from the Lenovo Center. Customers will only be accepted with reservations for now. The Hurricanes considered putting an in-person sports book at the venue, but that hasn't happened. The restaurant's food truck will be at all Hurricanes home games. In less than two weeks, the fate of the Menendez brothers could change as new evidence in their murder case comes to light. And feeling something wasn't right. The support they are now getting from family members who say they believe the brothers acted in self-defense when they shot and killed their parents. And sales for this year's Poland Park Holiday Express got off to a wonky start for those lucky enough to grab tickets while they lasted. We'll tell you about another way that you can get some tickets for this event. And it's a live look at Lewisburg for you. Good morning, folks. It's going to be beautiful weather for the first day of the State Fair. A little chilly out there, but Elizabeth Gardner will tell us how long the sunny skies and those cool temps will stick around. From the WRAL Severe Weather Center, North Carolina's most experienced team of meteorologists.
It is 4.42, and it's a chilly start out there this morning. 46 in Wilson, 45 in Durham, 46 in Fayetteville. There's a system sitting just off the coast that's pushing a little bit of cloud cover in this morning, and so that is keeping our temperatures in the mid-40s right now. If we clear out, we may see our temperatures dropping on into the 30s, but those clouds are hanging around for now, so we'll just have to see how fast things clear out in order to see if we end up with some frost. But most likely we're going to be in the low to mid-40s and some spots in the 30s, mainly uh, to our west or to our north, at least north and west of the Triangle area. Uh, a chilly start, though, for your run this morning. Skies will be clearing. We will see beautiful sunshine this afternoon, and it'll be chilly like it was yesterday with high temperatures in the low 60s. It is possible that we could see frost another time or two this week. I'll show you when it looks most likely. Elizabeth, thanks. The Los Angeles County District Attorney says he hopes to make a decision within 10 days about whether to recommend resentencing for the Menendez brothers. If he does, it's possible they could be out of prison by the end of the year. Several family members of Lyle and Eric Menendez gathered outside the L.A. courthouse yesterday calling for their release. Kitty and Jose Menendez were murdered by their sons in their Beverly Hills home in 1989. Relatives of both Kitty and Jose are arguing new evidence backs the brothers' long-standing claim they acted in self-defense after years of sexual abuse by their father. While tragic were the desperate response of two boys trying to survive the unspeakable cruel of their father. And that was the 92-year-old sister of Kitty Menendez you just heard speak. The DA says that while he is still reviewing evidence, based on what he has seen so far, he agrees with those family members and also believes the brothers' claims that they were molested. The brothers are both currently serving life without parole. Happening today, Holly Springs Police Department will host a candlelight vigil honoring the lives of those who have been affected by domestic violence. This is video from last year's vigil. This is the third year Holly Springs has hosted this event. It starts at 6 with the vigil beginning at 7. Candles will be provided and people who go will have the opportunity to share the names of those they want to be honored. UNC police are looking for people of interest in vandalism on campus. Police say they are looking to identify the people in these pictures. It's in connection with a series of vandalism at Granville Towers East on October 6th. If you have any information, if you recognize these people, please call UNC police. During her first interview with Fox News, Vice President Kamala Harris was pressed on her immigration policies. Here's her response to host Brett Baer's question about her changing stance since she first ran for president in 2019. We are very clear, and I am very clear, as is Tim Walls, that we must support and enforce federal law, and that is exactly what we will do. So decriminalizing border crossings, like you said in 2019. I, I do not believe in decriminalizing border crossings, and I've not done that as vice president. I will not do that as president. Harris spent much of the conversation trying to distinguish herself from both former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden. She said she represents, quote, a new generation of leadership. Tonight, former President Trump will be in New York City to deliver remarks at an annual charity event. Last night, he took part in a town hall with the Spanish language network Univision at their studio in Florida. During the forum, Trump took questions from undecided Latino voters on several topics, such as the economy, immigration, and reproductive rights. A former Republican voter told Trump that he would not vote for him due to his actions on January 6th. Trump responded that nothing had been done wrong that day. Those people went down to the Capitol. I said, peacefully and patriotically. Nothing done wrong at all. Nothing done wrong. But that was a day of love from the standpoint of the millions. It's like hundreds of thousands. After the town hall, Trump attended a fundraising event at Mar-a-Lago. UNC will celebrate the life of former football player Tylee Kraft this weekend. He was diagnosed with a rare form of lung cancer in 2022, and he died Saturday morning before the team's cancer awareness game. Throughout his illness, Kraft attended practices even after the cancer had spread to his brain. A celebration of his life will be in the hometown of Sumter, South Carolina this Saturday. UNC will provide bus transportation for players and football staff who want to go. 
Today, the town of Apex will break ground on a construction project. This project will complete a gap in the existing Peakway by constructing a four lane bridge over South Salem Street and the CSX rail line. It's expected to take three years to build. The event starts at 10 a.m. on the corner of South Salem and Apex Peakway. A Apex Mayor Jacques Gilbert and a representative from the DOT will speak. City of Raleigh had to pause sales for the popular Holiday Express event at Pullen Park after a glitch with the ticketing system. The virtual queue opened at 8.45 yesterday morning. The sale began at 9. In a Facebook post, the city announced a pause on sales while the vendor worked to fix the problem. The sales did resume at 11.45 yesterday morning. Everything was sold out by 2 p.m. Raleigh Parks Department has not returned calls from WRL News for an explanation about what happened. If you didn't get tickets, you can win tickets through the WRL Holiday Express Sweepstakes. That contest will be held in November. WRL is a proud sponsor of Holiday Express. Our temperatures out there feel a little bit like the holidays or what it might feel later in November and December. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center with uh, the frost advisory and what it looks like right now. It's chilly out there right now, of course. And uh, I even I came in in my, my puffy coat and everything. I was still chilly. Uh, what's happening right now is we have some cloud cover that's associated with the system that's sitting off the coast. And it's been pushing clouds in all morning. And that's going to keep our temperatures a little bit warmer. Clouds act as an insulating blanket and don't allow the daytime heating to escape into the atmosphere as quickly. So we just don't cool off as fast. So right now it's 45 degrees. So we're not too close to the 30s. We're probably going to stay in the 40s around the Triangle area. Um, there may be a few spots. Maybe our northwestern counties could end up seeing uh, those temperatures falling down uh, into the 30s. But even Roxbury right now is at 41. Now, we still have plenty of time to see temperatures dropping. We'll see the lowest temperature of the morning around 7 a.m. And of course, right now it is 449. So we still have a couple of hours to watch these temperatures drop. So Southern Pines, Roxbury, uh, those are the areas that are under the uh, frost advisory anyway, um, and so we may see some falling temperatures there. As a matter of fact, Siler City's dropped down to 36 right now. Again, the farther west we go, the colder the temperatures will be. In Wilson, it's 46, 44 in Roanoke Rapids, 41 in Lewisburg. We've dropped to 35 in Sanford and 36 in Robbins, 37 in Rayford, but 46 in Fayetteville, 44 in Clinton, 43 in Goldsboro. It's a little breezy out there right now. We're going to see some gusts this afternoon, about 10 to 15, maybe 20 miles per hour right now. Our wind is it about 5 to 10 miles per hour? I could feel it when I walked in this morning. Looking at some more patchy frost overnight tonight. We have a good chance of widespread 30s out there. 35 Roxborough, 39 Fayetteville, maybe 40 degrees in Raleigh. And so uh, we have a frost advisory that's ineffective this morning for uh, Person County, uh, Durham County, all the way down into the Sand Hills. And we're starting to see those temperatures drop there a little bit. Uh, we'll see if another frost advisory is posted for tonight. Here's what it's likely to look like tonight. And you can see the potential for frost across, again, the central and western parts of our viewing area. That's going to be what it looks like for tomorrow morning. And our forecast low for tomorrow in the triangle is 40. Our normal low is 50. So all the way into next week, our overnight lows are below normal. Um, it's going to be nice and clear this evening. Going to be perfect for viewing the comet. Look toward the western sky uh, just above the horizon about uh, an hour or so after sunset. It's becoming a little fainter. Hopefully you can see this photo right there. There's the comet. Uh, and that's from Neil Hawk in Lewisburg. And so we've had some really great weather watcher photos of the comet go to wrl.com search weather watchers and send us what you have state fair opens today 58 degrees as the gates open and our high temperature just 61 after that we drop into the 40s pretty quickly so if you're headed to the fair today take a jacket we do have much warmer temperatures in our forecast as we get into it next week so beautiful fair weather we'll also take a look at the tropics coming up in a few minutes all right, thanks, Elizabeth, for that. Space travel is getting a bit of a fashion upgrade. This is pretty neat here. We'll take a closer look at the new Prada spacesuits that will be worn during the next moon mission. Plus, the annual West End Poetry Festival gets underway in Carborough today. The fun activities featured this year. It was another dominating L.A. Dodgers win, and they are now in control of the National League Championship Series. This three-run homer right here by Shohei Otani it touches off what was an 8 to nothing win over the New York Mets. Uh, game three last night, that wrapped up, so the home team has now lost. The series begins. Dodgers lead the series two games to one. Game four is tonight in New York. 
The next astronauts heading to the moon will be wearing Prada. Take a look at this. It's a new spacesuit designed for NASA's Artemis III moon mission. Luxury fashion designer Prada created the suits alongside commercial space company Axiom Space. The mission is scheduled to launch in the second half of 2026, putting astronauts back on the moon for the first time since 1972. New York Liberty are one win away from becoming WNBA champions. Sabrina Ionescu hit a three-pointer with just one second left in the game last night to clinch that game three win. Buzzer beater. Liberty beat the Minnesota Lynx 80-77. to They have a two games to one lead in the series and a chance to close it out tomorrow night in Minnesota. Covering Orange County, the town of Carborough's annual West End Poetry Festival kicks off today. It runs through Saturday evening. This year's theme is Slow Down for Poetry. Events will be held around town, including open mic, youth poetry workshop, and food and drinks. All events are free and open to the public. The time has come for early voting. It begins today in North Carolina. How you can cast your ballot now with just 19 days remaining until Election Day. And check your freezers. We have a meat contamination to warn you about this morning. The products you'll want to look out for to avoid getting sick from listeria. Musician Liam Payne has died. We'll tell you how fans are remembering the former One Direction star after this unexpected loss.